I'm Dr. Michael Latola, And I'm Megan Strong. In this week's Case of the Week, I find myself on a slippery slope in the partial denture department. And we'll tell you about an unintentional drive through dental office in Deacon County, Georgia. And we'll slow down some footage of an Australian rules football match and see exactly what comes flying out of this guy's mouth. That and more on today's Chairside Live. Hello and welcome to episode 102 of Chairside Live. Megan, I usually start off by asking you how you are, but I know two things about you today. What? Pregnant and sick. Very sick. And so please excuse the nasally right. voice. And if I sneeze, I'm sorry. And if I'm out in the la la land, I'm apologizing right now. You're for struggling it. to breathe. I can hear I can't it's, breathe it's through awful. my nose. There's so. nothing worse than a summer cold anyway. You know, as opposed to a winter cold, sure. where for some reason it seems cozier. <laughs> uh, but to be pregnant at the same time and just a general discomfort, and then you add all that congestion yeah. in your head along with the one in your belly, it yeah. just seems like a lot of pressure. And no medication, you can't take medicine. Right. So it has been pretty miserable, but I'm here. The show must go on. Way to soldier on. If you need to tap out in the middle, let me know. Okay. I'll play both roles. I'll jump, I'll jump back and forth. Thanks. We've got an interesting episode for you today. We're finishing up our spring tour of the partial denture department with uh, a type of case known within the department as the slippery slope. And usually this is something that refers to a legal argument. But in the partial denture department, the slippery slope refers to the patient who's only got teeth number 22 through 27 left, and we're trying to make a partial denture with nothing but those iceberg-shaped anterior teeth left, and what are we gonna do for retention? What are we gonna do for support? In fact, let's take a look at that case now. I was taking my afternoon constitutional through the partial denture department and ran into the manager, Jerry Lord, and I said, Jerry, what's the biggest mistake or the biggest issue that you've seen this week causing your people to have to call doctors. And he said, it's what they call the slippery slope. And this is what the slippery slope looks like right here. The patient only has 22 through 27 remaining. There's no rest preps to speak of. In fact, there's no rest preps. And uh, the doctors asked for a mandibular partial denture. So this patient has already had some tissue and bone resorption, possibly or probably, uh, from her prior partial denture. And without a vertical stop, this mandibular partial denture will slip down that slippery slope of the remaining anteriors with the poor free gingiva waiting for further punishment and future tooth loss. So they designed this partial denture using a lingual plate major connector because there was really no room uh, for a lingual bar. And the patient could sure use a cingulum rest on 22 and 27. And if prepped well and the partials fabricated well, these stops... Uh, will resist the punishing lingual movement as the patient loads the posterior denture teeth. And so when prepping those lingual rests, you just want to be careful not to create any undercuts uh, as the partial won't seat if there are or the lab will have to block out um, the prep. And so I like to take just something like a 55, a burr that doesn't have any undercuts and just kind of hold it parallel to the long axis uh, of the tooth and just place that rest in there. And so not only are you placing the rest right here, but you've got, you're making sure that you don't have an undercut with the rest of it by using uh, the 55. But really all you wanna do is make sure that you don't undercut it or get undercut or place it into an undercut and just some sort of vertical flat surface here. Any flat surface perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth and the partial will be able to engage that and won't cut down and just strip the gingiva away from these teeth over time when this partial is totally tissue borne and not tooth borne at all. So that's, that's really too bad that there's no rest preps uh, on that particular one. If we look at another slippery slope model, this patient's got a bridge from 22 to 27 and um, a lab has fabricated this bridge and unfortunately there is no thought been given to a future possible removable uh, partial denture or a valplast or a flipper or anything. So either the lab didn't ask the doctor or asked the doctor and the doctor said no, but I like to make them anyway. Doctors will tell me, well, my patient can't afford to have that. And I'm like, well, they could win the lottery, you know, between now and then. It's always safer to have them. Anytime a bridge like this comes into us for a PFM bridge, uh, the combo department's all over it, calling the doctor and making sure. And, almost trying to talk, talk them into those rests because I tell you, we hear more times than not, doctors very nervous about now placing rest preps 
uh, into porcelain on a PFM that it might all come shattering off when it comes off. So it's very difficult to prep the porcelain uh, without hitting the opaque. So um, it's difficult, again, to do something here. Um, they designed it with a lingual plate and brought the plate in uh, as high as possible to rest above the cingulum, you know, in an attempt to try to get some sort of tooth support and not have it be totally tissue borne. Um, I, you know, if it were a, a Bruxer bridge, you might be a little safer going in and being able to put some lingual rest preps in there. But I understand why the doctor's nervous to go into a PFM and cut that. There's a pretty good chance that porcelain may actually shatter off of there. The right way to do it would have been to have a metal rest prep included in that design on the lingual somewhere the patient would never see it uh, when the bridge was designed. And I'm pretty sure that their tongue would get used to it, even if there never was uh, a partial that was done. Now, this got a lot going on here. It's another slippery slope case. The patient has number 22 uh, through number 28 here. And here the doctor prepped um, a nice defined cingulum rest prep on number 22. Now, look at that. There's no undercut. It looks, it really does kind of look minimal. I mean, it's just not super deep. We'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it. But it's enough. That is all we need, that little ledge to hang in on there. Nothing wrong with going a little deeper than that. But you can see as we zoom in the ledge that we have there, and it's a decent ledge. Let's hope it, it shouldn't break. You know, that's not uh, the area where the tooth would typically break. But that's enough for us to engage that with our partial and keep this from driving itself down into the tissue. We see a distal rest prep over here on the other side on tooth number 28. Uh, and we also see some rather prominent tori. We'll pull the camera back just a little bit so you can see those tori that are down there. And uh, that's not going to allow a lingual bar major connector. We do not want to impact those uh, tori. So the lab uh, designed it again using a lingual plate uh, major connector. And it's designed uh, above the tori and it's uh, been relieved. And the rest will certainly function well as vertical stops and uh, we're going to stand a much better chance of the patient not returning to this doctor in any kind of pain uh, from the tori uh, or from this uh, this partial overseeding down into the tissue and stripping it away from the teeth because we have a nice occlusal rest making this tooth borne here a nice uh, conservative eye bar that's going to be very um, very nice to the tooth when the patient functions on the back of this compared to a circumferential clasp because it disengages as it rotates towards uh, the distal. So those two eye bars there are cingulin prep and our occlusal rest prep here and staying away from those tori. There's a lot going on here, but this is a really good solution and the doctor did a lot right with those rest preps uh, to be able to make sure that we have something that should function for the patient for a long, long time without any pain and without increasing uh, periodontal situation that could lead to tooth loss. Now let's go to a segment we call You or Me. As I was going through the viewer mails this week, I found a couple short ones, so I wanted to pick both of them. And the first one comes to us from Dr. Joe Toljanik, and he writes, Here, I've got a question for Dr. Detola. In your last article in Chairside Magazine, you showed how you line biotemps with luxatemp. Have you ever had problems with the biotemps separating from the luxatemp liner? Do you, reti do you routinely cut retention in your biotemps to prevent this? Thank you. Well, Joe, that's a great question, and it's funny that you bring that up because when I first started here, I was told that the only thing that would chemically bond to the inside of biotemps was, in fact, a methyl methacrylate material. So something along the lines of SNAP or JET or TRIM, either an ethyl or methyl methacrylate. But I hated those because they were super exothermic. They just stink. You know, the monomer is just really offensive. Um, and they're, they're good, they're nice and strong, but I thought, is this really the only thing that'll stick? Because I hadn't been using them for the last couple of years. I've been using all bisacryls like Luxatemp. And I was like, boy, is this really gonna, the only thing that works in the Biotemp department told me, yes, this is the only thing that will stick to the Biotemp. So unbeknownst to them, I started relining them with Luxatemp and not saying anything. And I was waiting for the Biotemps to start falling off and they never fell off. And here we are now 12 you know, years later and I've never had Biotemps fall off 
and still had the bisacryl, say, on the tooth, for example, with the temporary cement, or even have them separate when I go to remove them and take them off. And so while I don't doubt that what the department says is probably true and that the only thing that will bond to it, to that acrylic, is a methyl methacrylate, I also know that there must be enough mechanical retention within the biotemps to keep the bisacryl inside of that. You know, most of the biotemps that I do, like most dentists, are multiple units. My, mine tend to be at least four, maybe six multiple units. And I think there's just enough retention within each of those. And sometimes the bisacryl will connect in the papilla area, but not necessarily. But sometimes if we recontour tissue, it will. I think there's enough mechanical retention uh, to hold it into place. The one thing you need to watch out for, the difficult part about doing it with the Luxatemp versus the methyl methacrylate, Methyl methacrylate, you can load it into the biotemps, pump it up and down on the prep so it won't get stuck in an undercut. As you know, with the Luxatemp, when you put it in there, it goes from unset to set about that quickly. And if you get it stuck in um, uh, some sort of undercut, uh, either on a single tooth or an undercut between a couple different teeth that are going to be single units later, but they're splinted now, you can get it stuck in place. And so I still like using the Luxatemp, and that's all my assistant and I have ever used to reline those and I haven't had a problem with it separating and I have not placed any additional mechanical retention into the biotemps itself. Your mileage may vary. Let me know if you had different results than that. The good question, thank you. Yeah, and then our last question comes to us from Dr. Athra Kalaf and he writes, Dear Dr. Detola, with the different variety of crown materials available today, it can get really confusing to choose, to choose which material for which restoration. Do you have a cheat sheet for different types of crowns, along with a cheat sheet for different types of cements that go with them? Thank you. That's a good question, and that's not the first request that we've had for something like that. We don't have a cheat sheet, per se. What I have is a wristband like an NFL quarterback. And so when it comes time to prescribe a crown, I'll often call an audible and start screaming Omaha like Peyton Manning, and then go to my wristband and start, then start screaming lithium disilicate, lithium disilicate, so we know it's supposed to be an Emax crown. Um, we don't have that cheat sheet yet, but uh, I'm going to give you my word right now, Athra, that within two episodes, which would be episode 104, Four. my math skills aren't what they used to be, uh -huh. um, that I will have that cheat sheet available. And it will be it. Okay, it will be available for download on the Glidewell website or also maybe a chairside laminate kind of like a VIP pass I hanging like around the it. neck and you say, okay, lower second molar, how much clinical crown do we have? Ooh, 2.8 millimeters, we need to reduce according to, oh, cheat sheet says Bruxer. And so we're gonna do a Bruxer crown, flip it over for the cement cheat sheet and it'll tell you if you're gonna cement it, you can use this, this or this. If you're gonna bond it, you can use this, this or this, but you also have to use this and treat it with a little bit of that. So it's going to be about this big, the lanyard that right. I'm talking about. It's going to be rather slave large. Slave. Or maybe we could put it, um, regardless, if we had a laminated mm -hmm. cheat sheet of some sort, some sort that Dennis could order from us or download, I think it would kind of help out because it's a little bit confusing. Solid zirconia is a different enough kind of beast from lithium sure. disilicate where it represents a new kind of class of materials that we really haven't had before. And, and it is confusing, and it is the question I get the most often when it comes to uh, bonding, uh, or cementing uh, full contour zirconia like Bruxer or lithium bisilicate like Emac. So I think that's a good idea. It might turn out to be a little more of a flow chart than a cheat sheet because there's really no right answer. It's still kind of up to the dentist and their preferences. But we can give some general guidelines or at least uh, I can give what um, I would do in sure. those situations and then the dentist can take that for what it's worth. So cool. I like those two awesome. shorter questions. I'm now committed to making the cheat sheet. Okay. So in honor of the uh, cheat sheet on what to use, I've got a Bruxer adjustment and polishing kit. And um, for Arthur in an odd picture where I'm staring out at the camera as though... Oh, you're so angry. I know. I, I don't remember, recall what I was angry about because I took the first bite of the pie. key lime pie. How could you be angry? And eat key lime pie. I know, it's weird. You know, it takes um, uh, three muscles to smile and 6,000 to frown or something like that. I'm not and that's, sure that's accurate. Well, the numbers are a little off, but okay. the ratio is correct. Like but it. you can see, yeah, I'm frowning there. And regarding the biotemps question, I think yeah. it's time that we gave away another one of our famous black 
clocks. Yeah, and, and so, you know what? I, when you were answering the question about the cheat sheet, um, I threw out a pop culture reference to Flava Flav, which you completely ignored. Oh. Um, are you... Are you do I you didn't know, even hear it. Do I was, you know who Flava Flav is? I do. Okay, well... I believe well, he has a grill and a huge watch around his neck. Clock. Yeah, clock so around his neck. So if you want to channel your inner pop star slash rapper, oh interesting, um, you can you can not only have the cheat sheet in a right. couple episodes around your neck, but you could also hang this. Right, or put the cheat sheet on the clock. Yeah. And when it says, "What kind of crown am I going to have, Doctor?" You go, "It's time for Bruxer." Yep. And that would be just like that. Right. That would be. Oh, yeah. that would be pretty nifty. That's All right. So excellent. Cool. Well, thanks. Glad you picked two letters. And you got any news for us today? I do. European researchers have found that red wine has antimicrobial effects on oral bacterial biofilms. Researchers used a five-species biofilm model of supergingival plaque and studied the effects of red wine, dealcoholized red wine, as well as red wine extract solutions spiked with and without grape seed and inactive dry yeast extracts on the biofilms, with water and 12% ethanol for comparison. They found that the solutions spiked with grapeseed extract were effective against three bacteria strains, while red wine and dealcoholized red wine had an antimicrobial effect against two of those three. The American Chemical Society hopes these findings will lead to the development of natural products that fight dental diseases with fewer side effects. Well, I think we've already developed them. It's Cabernet Sauvignon right. and letting if you letting patients know. That's kind of a dangerous message that letting them know that, uh, hey, here's a good way to fight periodontal disease. Don't floss. Right. A couple glasses of red wine. wine. But. I'm hoping that at first when I read that they were saying the American Chemical Society wants to find or produce products that, natural products that can help fight dental diseases with few, fewer side effects, I thought, I don't know. There's a lot of side effects of alcohol, but right. I, what I'm thinking that they're they're wanting to do is take the components of the red wine and then make either a pill form or whatever, so you're not actually drinking the alcohol. Right, the actual red wine. Get lit on a Tuesday to exactly. fight bacteria. So, but if I, I just wish there was some way to tie that to flossing, so it, right. if somehow you know the, the combination of the two proved. Uh, very effective. If there was like a grapeseed floss and if you had it with a glass of red wine, but right. I don't know. Who knows? You know what's very effective? What? Brushing your teeth and flossing. And good genetics. All go hand in hand. I absolutely agree. But they'll continue so, to look for an easy way out because we're Americans. And we we're like lazy to take pills. Fat. That's okay. right. Well, speak for yourself. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're I'm sick. Pregnant of, I know. That's, Thank you. I that keep forgetting. Rude anyways. Yeah, well, we got another story. Hopefully <laughs> right. that'll distract from that nonsense. A 55-year-old Georgia woman recently ran a stop sign and drove her SUV directly into a dentist's office. The office suffered structural damage and had to close. Police say the driver wasn't injured, but police did charge her with a DUI and she was taken to the county jail. Fortunately, there were no other injuries reported and police say no one was in the office at the time of the crash. Authorities are currently investigating the incident. Well, perhaps she was trying to get a handle on her periodontal disease yeah, by drinking like some it. red wine. And it, did it say if she had, a, you sent me this picture. I did. Did she actually have an appointment? Was this her dentist? No, okay. I think it was just, a, you know. A, just one of those things. In the wrong place at the wrong time. Was that last week we did this story about dropping off the baby at the dental office? Yes. Yeah, a lot of weird stuff going on in dentist right. offices these past couple of weeks. Babies being dropped off. Uh Chevy Suburbans <laughs> pulling into the. <laughs> did it say like is that the waiting room right there or was I, it a it bathroom didn't say or an it exactly operatory? Exactly where it uh, went in, but I'm just so thankful that no one was in the office because that would not have ended well. Yeah, not if somebody was sitting so, like right, right, yeah. right there. But uh, uh, it's just crazy. I wonder what's going to happen next week. You know, these things always happen in threes. I'm not superstitious, but okay. Well, I'm keep waiting for a Chevy SUV to bust in. Don't through the background say that. Of the chair side live. Not hit us. Just because the there's a loading dock right behind our studio. I know. So it'd probably be a FedEx truck. Is right. that your point? Yeah. Yeah, then it'd be back into it and that <laughs> be hit good. us from the back. Anyways, surprise, surprise, I've got oh. a bonus story today. Really? Yeah. Hit me with it. Here we go. And in a bonus story, like I just said, a player in the Australian Football League recently got hit in a game that he'll likely never forget. He was hit so hard that well, actually, let's just take a look at the clip and see. So here we go. 
I've actually watched a fair amount of Australian uh, league football. Oh, how cultured are you? West Coast Eagles, yeah. See, they talk funny. Oh! That, you know what's amazing? Watch when they do the other guy's head's okay. Right. Watch when they do the replay. You can see the two teeth fly out. There they go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. This is like the Zapruder film. Oh, God. The magic... Ch See, but again, again, the, too soon to make yeah. a Zapruder film. Yeah. It's, um, it's one of those things where they say the teeth come out, it's crowns. It's crowns coming out. There right. was no roots on right, those coming course. out. I always get excited when I hear teeth are going to come out, but it's just crowns. People knock crowns off on bit of honey candy bars. I They'll just be chewing. <laughs> Gross. That's Sorry. the most obscure <laughs> reference. But Or jujubes. Remember those candies? Yeah, my mom likes it. Or now and laters, or as my dad used to call them, now or nevers. You <laughs> just never get product names right. And you would chew on these and it pulls crowns off. Right. And we don't run around going, oh my God, it knocked a tooth out. Yeah. But on the news, every time they say that, I want to see an entire tooth evulsed. I want to see root and everything come out. Gross. But I even though that's interesting like to see of course, like, who cares if you crack it on a walnut or something? This is entertaining. It's crazy to think it that is. that impact knocked them out. And what could have prevented that from happening? A play safe mouth guard. There you go. A medium, maybe even a heavy because it's Australian yeah. rules football. It, so so it's, it's violent as they're playing this sport. Uh, but at the same time, it's hilarious because... Um, you know, at least here in America, we wear helmets to get a little protection. Sure. But there, it's all super violent, bulked up dudes. And then the referee is a little guy in a straw hat, you know, who, who goes like this when they right. score. You know, when they carry it across the line or kick it through the thing, and just a little that thing like good. that. Can and he's that all again? prim and proper. And, <laughs> and meanwhile, you've got these big thugs running out there knocking each other's crowns out, not their teeth. Uh, but regardless, still fun in slow motion to watch something fly. Yeah. Out of somebody's mouth. Maybe there'll be an episode of Chair Slide Live. We'll, we'll be able to slow it down and see something fly out of one of our mouths. I hope not. Key lime pie. Thank you for the bonus story. As a dentist You're for welcome. 25 years, I've spent all my time putting crowns in. It's fun to watch them come out sometimes. We usually yep. don't get to see it happen. Well, well, that about wraps it up for this week's edition of Chair Side Live. On behalf of myself, Megan, the whole CSL crew, and everybody here at the lab, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry. We'll see you next time. Thank you for that, Dr. D. You're welcome. Now stop it. Now let's go to a segment we call Stuffy Viewer Mail. Oh, sorry, I gotta be awake for this. Big energy. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <clears throat> Big flemergy. Here we go. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I feel like I should blow my nose, but I don't want you to use it on TV, and I hate blowing my nose in front of people. Go ahead. None of us are listening. Seriously. You don't have to close your eyes. Nothing's going to happen. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, that's so gross. Oh, I can breathe. For a moment. Why does it clog back up in two seconds? Do it like a hockey player. We don't run around going, oh, my God, it knocked a tooth out.